Okay, continuing the discussion on language development, uh, we're going to talk about like the different stages that a child develops their language over the course of uh, their life. So they begin learning their native language um, way, way before they learn anything like adding and subtracting uh, and different types of colors and all those different things. Uh, we learn on average, after age one, about 3,500 words a year. And usually we can get to roughly, uh, there's different numbers anywhere from 50 to 70,000 words by the time you graduate from high school. So we go through some different stages, and we'll go through each stage right, right now. Uh, we have the babbling stage, which begins at four months, and the, the child is just basically making noises. And like you saw in the Crash Course video, it is not a imitation. It is just the baby is figuring out that they're, they have this skill of being able to make noises, and a lot of times noises mean reactions. So they typically make noises in order to get a reaction from uh, the parents or whomever is taking care of them. Uh, so it is pretty much exactly what it means, uh, babbling. The next stage is what we call one word stage. And this is usually around your first birthday. Uh, it can be a little bit before, it can be a little bit after. And this is when parents begin to freak out that their child is not speaking at the proper level. Uh, a lot of times children who are the first child in their family speak much sooner than a second or third child, uh, typically because a lot of times the second or third child is paying attention to what the oldest child is doing and not focusing on themselves. So they're, they're watching, they're analyzing. Uh, they are usually slower speakers, but not always. Um, Usually it's kind of one word at a time. They, they see something and point to it, just like the word doggy. Um, they'll point to the doggy or they'll point to the ball. Uh, in all actuality, their brain is saying, oh, look at the doggy or look at the ball or give me the ball or point to the bottle. But they only say one word at a time. <coughs> the two-word stage is uh, before the second year, so it kind of works out nice that it's, you know, one word is right around first birthday, two word is a little bit before your second birthday. Um, this is when they start to form what we call telegraphic speech because um, the children speak more like a telegram or a telegraph. And uh, a lot of people can even call it text speech where you you just eliminate a lot of unnecessary words. They just want to say the most important things that occur. So, go car means I would like to go for a ride in the car. Then we get into our longer phrases. Uh, this is when a child can really start to separate themselves from one and another. Um, they begin to have some syntactical sense. They begin to learn a little bit more at school because they're in pre-K or uh, getting into child care where there's a little bit more children, so they're developing more dialogue skills. So these longer phrases start to come out a little bit more. And they're also starting to have personality with their language, not just robotic, like the one word or two word phrase is very robotic. Uh, there's a little bit more personality to their verbiage uh, that they use. So here's a nice clean chart that kind of tells you uh, exactly what stage each one has. So you have the babel stage, approximately around four months uh, that that begins right around 10 months you start to resemble household language and then the one word stage at year one two word stage right around two years and then longer phrases as they get a little bit older so uh, a lot of different theories that we kind of discuss about our development involve imitation that is very obvious children imitate everything whether they see it on a video or they hear it from our parents or siblings. Then we also have what's called operant learning and inborn universal grammar, or what we call the critical period. So imitation um, can be very, very uh, different uh, depending on who the child is and the environment that they grow up in. But sentences produced by children are very different from adult sentences. Can cat stand up table? A, my pencil. What the boy hit. 
other one pants. So what the child can't do is for some sort of reason, um, they, they, it's very hard for them to kind of put together everything that they hear and imitate it. So when you are constantly trying to say a word to a child for them to say, psychologically they can't form the same way that we do imitation. It's just a long process. Um, a lot of times when there is a speech impairment, um, they, they overcome it and they kind of go back to their imitation rules. Operant learning. Uh, this is language acquisition is governed by operant learning principles. Uh, so you're associating the sight of things with the sound of words. So you are putting different symbols in front of a child and you're giving them an operation. You're giving them a, um, a level two kind of function that this means this. Uh, picture an apple and then you have the letters of an apple. There's a reason why, you know, a lot of those old school signs have, you know, the letter A, there's an apple underneath it because, you know, we have to have that association with it. Um, imitation of words and syntax have to be modeled. There has to be reinforcement by the caregiver. So the caregiver could be the parent, could be a babysitter, uh, daycare, uh, pre-K teacher, somebody who's teaching them at that time. But also, this assumes that children are being constantly reinforced for using good grammar and correct it when they use bad grammar. The problem that we run into with our language development, especially in this country, is we do not praise good grammar often enough at a young age. Thus, we revert back to the grammar that gets results. And a lot of times the results is uh, yelling or screaming or negative grammar. Uh, even when there's cute mistakes, that's hard for parents to correct. Uh, the accidental swear word, or they say something that is totally irrelevant, um, you got to correct it, or else the language will not develop properly. Then finally, we have what we call um, inborn universal gra uh, grammar. So this is by uh, Noam Chomsky, and basically what was said by Chomsky was, that language is entirely inborn. It will naturally occur. We do not need to kind of learn it. It will just be kind of happen as the brain develops, your language develops. Uh, there's a lot of things that occur in language that uh, goes against this theory by Chomsky. Uh, but if you look at number four, it says children acquire untaught words and grammar at a rate too high to be explained through learning. So there's a lot of truth to that, that a lot of times parents get surprised by words that the child uses that they've never heard before used in their own household. And maybe they even check with the teacher and the teacher has never heard the word. So a lot of times that is um, very difficult to understand. There's also a question of productivity. Why, why would they say the phrase, I hate you, daddy? You know, as a young child, where's the productivity in that, if that's uh, inborn uh, in all of us? Number six, many of the mistakes children make are from overgeneralizing grammar, uh, rules they picked up on, but the children do not learn their environment's language uh, as well. Uh, with universal grammar, all human languages have the same grammatical building blocks, such as nouns and verbs, subjects and objects. Uh, negations and questions as well. So we early, early, early on speak mostly in nouns because that is the most vital and important information. Bottle, ball, doggy, things like that. And then we start to go through the developmental stages as well. Last but not least, uh, the critical period. We talked about this in class that we go through these massively important critical periods not only for language development but every, every type of development that we use uh, while we are growing up. So our critical period is um, very important, but we have to be able to keep up. So the child, the child seems to represent a critical period for mastering aspects of language, but once the critical period is over, mastering the grammar of another language is very difficult and almost impossible to master once the critical period is complete.